The question given here is the following patient presented to the OPD with repeated short interruptions of normal breathing during sleep and feeding difficulties. The clinical picture is attached. His parents and siblings do not show any similar findings and he is classified as Tessier number 678 and identify the syndrome. So, the clinical picture of the patient is given here and based upon the characteristic facial features that we are going to make it out from the image, help us come to the diagnosis that the syndrome the patient is suffering from. So, the given syndromes in the options are Golden Heart Syndrome, Francis Chetty Syndrome, Krausen Syndrome and Appert Syndrome. So, first let us know what these syndromes are. So, Golden Heart Syndrome is nothing but it is an oculo auriculo vertebral dysplasia. It is also known as oculo auriculo vertebral dysplasia and it is one of the syndrome associated with hemifacial microsomia. So, hemifacial microsomia indicates that the affected side of the face is going to show underdeveloped organs and the organs that are affected are orbit, eyes and also the vertebrae. So, therefore, golden heart syndrome is known as oculo auricular vertebral dysplasia characterized by hemifacial microsomia as one of the manifestations. Second option is Francis Chetty syndrome which is nothing but the treacher Collin syndrome. It is the alternative name for treacher Collin syndrome or mandibulofacial dysostosis. Mandibulofacial dysostosis. So, therefore, this Francis Chetty syndrome has got characteristic facial features which is unique to this syndrome. And coming on to the third and fourth option that is a Krausen syndrome and Appert syndrome, you have to know that they are nothing but or they are characterized by craniosynostosis. So, craniosynostosis is nothing but there is premature fusion of the cranial suture. So, the premature fusion could be either with a single suture or with multiple sutures of the skull. So, therefore, Krausen and Appert syndrome are craniosynostotic syndrome and both will exhibit mutation in the FGFR2 gene. So, that is a common finding again but apart from that there is some difference that is the Appert syndrome will show syndactyly that is there is fusion of digits of hands and toes, fusion of digits. So, mostly second, third and fourth finger gets fused and then uh, it is going to give an appearance known as mitten, hand and sock, feet because of this feature of syndactyly evident in case of upper syndrome. Therefore, it is a syndactyly that is going to act as a main differentiating feature between Krausen syndrome and the upper syndrome. So, now with this basic knowledge, now let us look into the given clinical picture and then list out what are the various or what are the obvious abnormal findings you could find in this image. So, first of all, we can see that there is evidence of hypertelorism. Hypertelorism is nothing but increased intercanthal distance. So, there is hypertelorism seen in this patient and you, here you can find an anti-mongoloid slant of the palpebral fissure because the palpebral fissures show a downward displacement of the eyes. Here you can see there is downward displacement of the eye and this is known as the anti-mongoloid slant. And apart from that, one another important finding that we can see is the facial cleft that is running from the right angle of the mouth. Right angle of mouth is exhibiting a facial cleft. Here you can see there is facial cleft extending from the right angle of the mouth. And apart from that, ear malformations, okay, the ear external auditory meatus or the pinna is not well defined that is there is ear malformation that is seen in this image. Apart from that the patient is having an open mouth view which means that the patient is a mouth breather and you could see that there is hypoplastic chin that is seen in this picture. There is hypoplastic chin giving it an Retruded appearance to the mandibles. So, retruded chin is one another important feature that you can make out here. So, now these are some of the characteristic findings that we can find out in the given clinical picture and now correlating with the various clinical features of the syndromes given to us, let us come to the diagnosis. So, first is the golden heart syndrome 
as I've already mentioned, it is oculo-auricular vertebral dysplasia. So, though oculo-auricular organs are involved here, the, it is mainly seen as hemifacial microsomia, so which means that one side of the face remains underdeveloped, resulting in asymmetry of the face. So, here you can see that there is no asymmetry as such evident in the picture. There is both right side and left side structures appear almost symmetrical. So, there is no asymmetry seen here based on which we can eliminate option 1. Whereas, the second one is the treacher Collins syndrome. So, treacher Collins syndrome is also known as mandibular facial disaster. So, the treacher Collins syndrome has got characteristic feature that I have to mention. They are nothing but anti-mongoloid slant and they will be coloboma of the lower eyelid, they will be facial clefts that is evident and they will be hyperplasia of the zygomatic as well as the mandibular bone and that is going to result in absence of malar prominence that is seen here and apart from that you have to know that there is retruded chin because of the mandibular Hypoplasia is going to give a retruder chin appearance to this patient and also ear malformations are also found in case of treacher Collins syndrome. So, most of the features that we have discussed under treacher Collins syndrome matches with the features found in the clinical picture. And then coming on to Krausen and Appert syndrome, Krausen syndrome will show brachycephaly, brachycephalic skull whereas Appert syndrome will show Acrobrachycephaly, which is going to give a tower shaped appearance to the skull. Okay, you will have a tower shaped appearance to the skull. Whereas, apart from these skeletal changes, the skull changes, both of the conditions is going to exhibit proptosis, hypertelorism, etc. So, certain findings are going to be the same in case of Krausen as well as Appert syndrome. And one another important point among the two is that the patients will display mid-face hypoplasia. Mid-face mid hypoplasia which means that they will be prognathic mandible. That is the mid-face is small but there is prognathic mandible that is present here. So, in case of mid-phase hypoplasia, there, are, there is also hyperplasia of the uh, respiratory passages and all these are going to result in a condition known as sleep apnea. As there is cessation of breathing, you can uh, recollect the one in the question. So, therefore, the most important point here we have to remember is mid-phase hypoplasia and therefore, it results in prognathic mandible appearance. So, therefore, correlating this, there is no mid-phase hypoplasia in the given image and there is no prognathic mandible also. Rather, there is a hypoplasia of the malar region as well as the lower jaw that is the mandible giving it a retruded chin appearance. Therefore, the overall features of treacher colon is going to be a bird facies or fish like facies appearance. So, therefore, the right answer or the most favorable answer to the given clinical picture is going to be the option 2 Francis Chetty syndrome known as treacher colon syndrome or mandible facial dysostosis syndrome. So, now looking into the other two syndromes as I have already mentioned upper syndrome. Here you can see that there is mid facial hyperplasia, there is prominent mandible that is seen here and there is proptosis that is evident here. So, these are some of the findings you can make out in case of upper syndrome and you can see there is a tower shaped skull for this patient suffering from upper syndrome. When it comes to Krausen syndrome here you can may see, uh, see the same features just hypertelorism and proptosis etc. The similar feature is what you are going to see here also and here you can find that there is a mid facial hypoplasia giving the prognathic appearance to the mandible, prognathic appearance to the mandible. So, therefore, these are the characteristic facial features of various syndromes that are provided here. So, therefore, when it comes to treacher Collins syndrome, the most important point we have to see is the anti-mongoloid slant and there is coloboma of the lower eyelid, lateral lower eyelid and there is absence of malar prominence and there is hyperplasia of the mandible which is going to result in a retroduction appearance 
retroduction and you can also notice that the years are not well defined. So these are some of the characteristic findings in case of preacher Collin syndrome. So now correlating the above features we can come to a diagnosis that the given clinical picture in the question favors mostly over preacher Collin syndrome that is a mandibulofacial dysostosis. So now uh, comes one another point that is they have mentioned they have classified this as tessier 6 7 and 8. So we have to know what is this Tessier classification. It was given in 1976 by Paul Tessier classifying the facial cleft into four different groups namely median clefts, paramedian clefts, orbital clefts and the lateral clefts and he has also categorized the clefts into soft tissue level and hard tissue level. So what we are seeing here is the soft tissue level and various lines of cleavage are mentioned with the number. So these facial clefts as per Tessier classification are numbered from 0 to 14 starting from the midline also ending towards the midline. So 0 to 14 are the numbering in case of the facial cleft of the soft tissue. So here we have to notice that 6, 7 and 8 that is the cleft number 6 and cleft number 7 and cleft number 8. So all these three clefts are involved in one particular condition and that is known as treacher Collins syndrome that is 6, 7, 8. They are found most commonly in treacher Collins syndrome. So this is an important point we have to remember as an MCQ also we could expect. So this is a clue clue word or the key term in the question actually. So the Tessier 6, 7, 8 is seen in which syndrome. So if you are aware that it is seen in preacher Collins syndrome, we can easily omit the remaining explanations or remaining options and then straight away click the answer preacher Collins syndrome. So therefore, getting back to the question, we can make out that the characteristic clinical features as I have listed matches more suitably with the option 2 Francis Chetty syndrome that is a treacher Collins syndrome mandibulofacial dysostosis and the Tessier number 6, 7, 8 is more prevalent in case of this Francis Chetty syndrome. So therefore, the syndrome associated with a pediatric child in the given picture is treacher Collins syndrome or mandibulofacial dysostosis.